very difficult, I guess. Uh, it's not very difficult to uh, to attract many wonderful people to come mm -hmm. here because, as uh, Deb and Chris mentioned, we have the best, Absolutely. the best of uh, you know uh, skilled people, and also universities can uh, you know can provide you with the brains. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, and entry level. We the the universities that are all within very close proximity uh, supply us with uh, certainly all of the young talent that uh, that we need definitely and where you can find a job like this you can have mm -hmm. fun and make yes. money yeah yeah it sounds like our job <laughs> yeah, it's our job. <laughs> yeah it's a lot of work but we also have uh, our moments of fun here too absolutely yeah um, is there anyone from the media here who have any questions. I think that we're at that part of the agenda right now. You said that most of these guys would be doing the coding on their own if they weren't getting paid. So does that allow you to pay them just bare bottom? <laughs> <laughs> The answer to that question is that when we interview people uh, at Digital Extremes, uh, one of the things that we see among the, you know, the best and the most passionate people is that these are things that they do in their spare time. Uh, it's something that they love. They love the process either of creating content or solving computer problems or, you know, they're passionate about optimizing network communications and, and they've done it in their spare time. They've done it at school and they have a passion for it. Um, I think we pay them very well when they come here to do this work and uh, and uh, as a result they can go on and spend that uh, that money in the community here pursuing their uh, you know their their life yeah. and, and, and your investment about 35 million dollars yes right? that's right yes how many people you have all over is that when the media guy uh, how many people do we have all yeah. over uh, in in DE in right now yeah. um, we're up to roughly 150 right now that would be another 30 people yes yeah, so uh, by the time we're we're done this um, We'll, we'll be at least 180 over the duration of this. Perhaps, hopefully more, but at least that, yeah. So this new engine, it's kind of like when the Unreal Engine came up about, this is how many steps beyond that kind of thing. What will it be? More, more 3D, better, mm -hmm. better speed? What are the aspects? Well, the Unreal Engine was an engine that we collaborated on um, much earlier on in uh, in our our company's history, uh, and the Unreal Engine has gone on to become one of the predominant game engines in the industry, uh, and it's up to its third version now. What we have is basically our own technology that we went off and started to develop on its own. So we have a working uh, version of our engine that came out with our first video game, Dark Sector, back in 2008, uh, and we've continued to upgrade it and to make it more powerful, more versatile, and uh, more optimized for the, uh, for the personal computer as well as other uh, development platforms. And right now we're also looking at um, bringing it onto some of the, the tablets. So um, the, the, uh, the, the playbooks, the iPads, and some of those others, now that the technology is increasing, is now going to be one of our targets for, making, for running our technology, because we think that that's going to be uh, a, f a future platform where, where for interactive entertainment. 3D is everything, or is nothing, or somewhere in the middle? 3D? Yeah. That's an interesting story. Um, if you want my opinion on it, it'll probably take longer. Um, 3D is, is interesting. There's two kinds. There's the 3DS, where you don't have to wear the glasses, and then there's the stereoscopic. I think both have a future. It's fun and it's interesting. Um, game developers are just figuring out how to, to use it um, to enhance um, entertainment experiences. Um, but our engine already supports it. So Mr. Bentley mentioned something about the relationship between your company and the university, especially C Start, the mm -hmm. surgery and all the stuff. Can you right? Uh, right. <laughs> Right now we're just, yes, absolutely. Right now we're just beginning to explore those opportunities and those partnerships. Um, game development is really long and really hard and uh, it's been our focus for the past 18 years. But now that we have technology that we feel can be widely utilized and licensed in other industries, we, uh, we are definitely going to be following up with other, uh, on other opportunities in those industries and I hope that um, um, we've already spoken with 
people over at CSTAR, and those have been, um, I think, very, very fruitful discussions. And we'll continue to uh, collaborate uh, with, um, I guess, business leaders from other industries to, um, to really kind of shore up what the marketing opportunities are and the business opportunities are in those industries to, to license it. Um, I think regardless, just in our own industry, our technology is, is absolutely cutting edge. Uh, it's got a number of features that don't exist in, in, in any other uh, game engine that allow our development team to make games faster uh, and more efficiently and actually, I think in many ways, um, much better. And as an independent developer, we'll make our video games with teams that are half the size of uh, larger companies in the United States, and that's part of our competitive advantage. And uh, we think that that is a, a widely licensable proposition. And this is OMDC funding, is it, or uh, your Amido Development Corporation? Or? No, this funding is coming from the Ministry of Economic okay. Development and Trade. So this is On behalf of the Minister, this is separate from the one that would. February, there was one announcement in February, right? In the OMDC. Um, I'm not aware of that one. Okay. Just getting this funding, 2.5 million that from the. Ontario, I think, the uh, funding that was, was it? Yeah. Okay. It wasn't involved with digital extremes, oh, though. So this, yeah. is this is separate. This is something different, funding. yeah. Yeah. This is brand new news. Brand new okay. yeah. uh, investment on behalf of the Minister of uh, San Francisco, Gallo, we that announcement today. Right, okay, all right. Where are you in the process then, Michael, in terms of the new engine? Like, how long is it in terms of the or how would you characterize where you are in development? Uh, essentially, the engine is, uh, it, 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 it works, it's up and running. It, it was first brought into kind of its uh, finished form back in 2008 when we uh, launched Dark Sector. Uh, we currently have two large development projects using that technology in-house right now and we're also uh, consulting and working with a number of other companies who have begun to license and evaluate our technology for their own games as well as working with other hardware companies and we have formal relationships now with at least one tablet uh, vendor to begin the process of porting our technology over to those platforms. That's what this grant would support. Then that, that sort of work. Or? Yes. Basically, it's a part of our strategy as a government to uh, invest in, uh, in high-tech company and also to create a job because we believe, as I said at the beginning, uh, the traditional job is not going to exist in the province of Ontario. So if we keep it, we're not able. We won't be able to compete with China and India. So therefore, we invest in high-tech and. And, and create a job in high tech uh, industry, and then we believe there's a future for our province. But, but the additional, uh, or this product would support that additional hiring that you mentioned? Yeah. Yes, yes. So essentially, it's, uh, I th it's basically for uh, expanding our operations, hiring more technical people, technical programmers, as well as hiring um, uh, commercial uh, and sales people to assist in the marketing and licensing of the technology. And you have, uh, well, you just had the, uh, the Bioshock version come out, um, and uh, you had um, other games. So there are other games in the works now, I think, that you're keeping them. Yes. Yes. Our most recently announced game is The Darkness 2, which should be right, out yeah. later on this year. Yeah. Right. Okay. And it's uh, coming along extremely well. It's going to be really good. So how much do you sell the game? The game? How much does it cost? Uh, no, to sell it to oh. the consumer. It'll be $59 in Walmart and other vendors. <laughs> I would think. Maybe 64 or how much, I don't know. How much money would one game cost? If you could just isolate one game, how much money, manpower, time, computing power goes into building one game that you sell for $59.99? I can answer that in, in general terms because I can't really tell this, the very specifics of, of our game uh, development costs. Those are, are actually confidential, not by our choice. But, but I can say that in general it costs roughly about 15 to 20 million dollars in development fees to make the games that you will buy off the shelf for an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3. Um, some of the games, such as Call of Duty, or the big games that will sell 10 million copies, will um, will actually cost much more. And again, those exact costs, I only have an idea because I read the internet and I see what people say. 
Yeah, very, very expensive. They're long. And I can tell you from, you know, the, the effort that I see that we put into to, to um, uh, on our side, it's, it's, it is a tremendous amount of work. It's thousands of man months to make these games. Now, this is unusual, but I'd like to ask a question. Yes. <laughs> um, I see you are, uh, were named one of Financial Post's 10 best companies in Canada to work for. Yes. So as a supplementary to Mike Hatfield, who says, do you pay people nothing? Um, how did you, how, how is it that you were awarded that? This um, <laughs> yes, we are actually named uh, Financial Post Top 10 Company, one of Can Financial Post's top 10 companies to work for in Canada in 2010 and 2011. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they made that decision, but they did ask us how much, in general, we paid our employees. So that was a factor. And, and they probably visit this place. Yes, yeah, a number of other things. <laughs>